Welcome to Something Special Designs by Tina Williams, where I create DIY home decor using mostly thrifted and upcycled items. Sit back and enjoy the video. And if you like it, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll know when I upload future videos. Hi everybody, this is Tina. Hope you're doing well today. Project number one. I have these hat boxes, uh, a total of three. Two I thrifted earlier, and then I got this last one recently. So a total of three. And I'm wanting to use the new IOD paint inlays for their spring collection. And I'm using the Petite Floral Pink. And I also um, am going to be painting each one of these with the DIY paint. I'm going to be using Petticoat Pink. And I'm going to be using Apothecary. So I'm going to be painting the bases on all three of these with the Petticoat Pink. And it's going to take a total of three uh, coats of the pink and two coats of the uh, apothecary. Really, it only takes two coats on this uh, plain hat box, but it took three coats of the pink on the uh, other ones that were already uh, printed because it had to, I had to cover that. And these two colors work really, really well, I think, together, especially if you're doing um, kind of a shabby uh, cottage look. And when you do the inlays, you do have to put some paint down And I am going to pick out which inlays I'm going to use for each of the pieces. And I actually only use half of the inlays in the package. It comes with two sheets of each, uh, you know, double, like that sheet, for instance, there's two of those. So there's two of each sheet. And we're only going to use half of them today. We're going to actually use them um, one time and then we're going to reuse them um, the second time on all the other projects and we make quite a few projects with them. So I'm just going to cut out all of my pieces. And decide where I want all of them on each one before I get started. And then I'm going to start applying all of the different uh, inlays. And I was a little intimidated by inlays before I did this. And this is a great set to start with because you can, um, you know, use, use it on little different pieces. So you could just take one small piece, for instance, and start, to, you know, use it. So the first thing you do is you have to put some paint down so that the inlay has something to uh, stick to. And I am misting my inlay with some water before I put it down. And that's just to activate the paint in the inlay. I've noticed um, some people do it that way, some people don't, but I think you get a better result, especially when you're using them for like the second or third time. And after I do that, I even, I missed the top of the, the or the back of the inlay that's, you know, laying down and I go over it with a wipe, just pressing it lightly to make sure that it's pressed into the paint. And I do the same thing 
and keep repeating that throughout the process all the way through all three of these. And it's actually really easy to do. The one thing you need to remember is you may have to trim the sides to get the um, inlay to butt up against the next one. And otherwise there'll be like a gap. So that's what I'm doing there, making sure that it's one long line. I had to trim the little piece there. And I've already missed my inlay, so. And then I just make sure that I spray it. Just And I'm not using a sprayer, I'm using a mister, so it's very, very light amount of water. And then I just make sure that I go over it and um, make sure that it is in my making contact with the paint. That's basically what you're doing. You could use a sponge and that way it'll activate the inlay. You don't want to be too rough with it, but at the same time, you do want to make sure that you are making contact with the paint. you do want to do is you want to make sure that you don't add too much water because it'll make the uh, paint or the inlay blur there's like you need to mist it and if you're not going to use a mister I would use like a sponge or something like that so anyway I just keep repeating the process and after you do that you let your inlays sit for about an hour uh, so that they're completely dry so then you can move on to the next step which is basically removing uh, the inlays after they're dry. Okay, 
after if you've waited about an hour and your inlays are dry, you'll see they they uh, no longer are transparent. They're kind of opaque. That's when you know they're dry. You're gonna spray it with a mister and you wanna wait a little while and allow that water to soak in. I didn't wait long enough and uh, the paint was starting to lift up and stay on the paper rather than lay on my project. So in that case, I laid it back down and I waited a little bit longer. And now you can see it released beautifully after that. And basically you just repeat that same process. You mist your dry uh, paper, let it set for a few minutes, and then you peel it off. And I did that on all three of my boxes. I then sprayed it with a polyacrylic. You don't want to use a brush because you can distort the image. And so now I'm going to do a second coat of polyacrylic and I am going to be mixing um, that with some uh, Ranger vintage photo. You can use anything to tint it. I'm just tinting my polyacrylic. I already had some and I mixed it in with the can I already had and um, I just want a light uh, kind of a vintage look on this and I just took that uh, Ranger uh, ink and mixed it with that you can use any water base type of stain to mix it as long as it's water based and what that's going to do is it's going to uh, give me my second coat of sealer on my project and it's also going to lightly tint it to give it a more vintage look and I just repeat that process on all three boxes. So the reason that you uh, use a spray first is to seal in the paint and after it's sealed then you can of course go and, and use a brush like I am doing here so you do that on all three boxes. So now I'm going to be using uh, my IOD New Spring Release Apothecary Labels. And I will be um, using three different labels from the set. And I'm stamping it with Versamark, which is something you use to allow embossing powder to stick. So you stamp it and it looks clear. You do it the same way you would do it with ink. And it just allows the powder to stick to it. It's just kind of a sticky surface. And then you take your embossing powder. I'm using gold um, embossing powder from Ranger. And I just put it on and any excess I take off with a brush. And then I use my heat gun to melt the embossing powder. It won't work with a hairdryer. You have to have an embossing gun to do that to get, for it to get hot enough. And I basically just do that on all three boxes um, and just repeat that process. Okay, after I've done all of the labels and the embossing, I am taking some Rub and Buff 
and I'm using antique gold and I'm going around the rim, the top rim and the bottom rim of the box just with a little bit of it. I'm using a combination of a paintbrush and my finger and I'm going to do that also on the bottom and I'm doing that on each box so it'll have a little bit of gold. And then the last thing I do is I have some uh, gold cording. I'm putting the cording in. There was some in the uh, two of the bigger boxes originally, and it was red. And so I found this gold to match our colors in our box. And I'm putting the cording through the little holes. And that's it, guys. That's our project. These turned out fantastic. I'm going to be using them in my craft room. I absolutely love them. Now we are on to project number two. We are going to be making a book stack with these two books that I have. And for this project, you need a hardcover. And I am just going to be uh, painting these uh, books front and back with Krenlin. Uh, it's a DIY paint. And I have all, all, already sprayed these with a uh, clear uh, sealer. It is going to take two coats because they're were dark colored books. And that's going to be our base for our uh, books. And this is the second use of the inlay. So we are going to use the inlays for the second time. And that's one thing that you want to do when you use your inlays is you want to lay them aside and don't put them on top of each other and lay them flat somewhere so they can dry so that you can reuse them. Now, when you reuse them, this has uh, paint from the previous project on it. So some of that is going to show up on your project, which I happen to really love. It gives it a very shabby kind of look. And you go through the same process that you do um, when you use it the first time. You're going to spray your inlay with water and you're going to make sure it's nice and uh, damp. You're going to make sure that you're laying it into some fresh wet paint and make sure that your inlay is making contact with that paint and either rub it with um, a, you know, a sponge or a damp cloth or something.
so now when everything's dry, we do the same thing we did uh, with the hat boxes, even though this is the second time using it. So you can see that the image is still, you know, pretty good. I mean, it's not as crisp, which I like actually. And, um, but you do see a little bit of the paint residue from the previous project on there. And to me, it gives it even more of like a shabby look to it. But you do everything the same. You, you mist it, um, you let it sit, and make sure that the water is absorbed by the paper. And you can see, you get a pretty good image, but you are gonna have part of the paint. So for instance, if you didn't want that to show up, the green, you could have, I could have painted these um, books uh, with the green and it would have, you would not really have noticed uh, the, the uh, paint residue. So that's something to consider when you're using them. Again, for the second time, I wanted that. So after um, I did that and I let them dry, I, I took all of the inlay off. You can see the little paint residue. Um, I am going over uh, these with Paint Couture Crackle, step one. And I'm going to do that on both books. I'm not doing the back. I'm just doing the front and the sides on both of these. And you let that dry completely. And then um, after that, I think it takes about an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, and it dries. And then you do a uh, crackle step two, and it's a clear crackle. So what's gonna happen is you're just gonna basically have a crackle on, on it that you can go over. And then I'm taking some paint uh, couture Van Dyke Brown glaze, and I'm going over these with that, and I'm wiping it, most of it back. What's gonna happen is that glaze is gonna show up in all of those cracks that we put in the crackle. So to me, that's going to further make this look more distressed. I think it goes uh, well with what I'm trying to achieve with these. So now I have a casting um, from the mold, all olive crest from IOD that I painted with Dixie Bell bronze gilding wax and I'm attaching it to the top book just to give it a little uh, extra look. And I also use that same bronze gilding wax to go all the way around the edges of the book. And then I added some lace to it just to make it look pretty. I think they turned out really good. I love the shabby look. It's really, really pretty. So now we're on to project number three. And this one is uh, made with a tin that I got from the dollar store. I buy these every time I see them. For some reason, my dollar store never gets the oval ones. If you see them, snatch them up. I love making things with these. And what you see there, these little uh, feet that I'm using, I got those from uh, Joann's, I believe, but all craft stores carry them and they're very inexpensive. And I'm using some um, E6000 and a little bit of um, my uh, Gorilla Super Glue, a couple drops of Super Glue and the E6000. The Super Glue dries up in 15 seconds. The E6000, you really should wait like overnight. But if you add the Super Glue, then you can, you know, work with the project without waiting overnight. 
So that's usually how I do it. Plus the super glue adds additional strength. So I'm gonna put these four feet on this little tin. And wipe off any excess glue, which I usually always have because I tend to put a lot of glue on it. And I know some people use hot glue, but I just feel like, especially on the tin, that this is a better hold. So now I'm just gonna go uh, paint this tray and I have already sprayed it uh, with a sealer before I started and um, a clear sealer just to give it better and you know adhesion in and you use less paint that way. Um, I am going to be going over this with Quinlan from DIY and I'm gonna do two coats and we are going to, again, be using our um, inlays for the second time. This is the second use, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just put uh, three pieces that I picked out down on the tray. Again, repeating the same process that we did before, uh, just making sure you have wet paint. And I spray with uh, a mist, really, and I go ahead and put it down and make sure you put the uh, correct side down. You want the grid facing you and the paint facing down and you wanna go ahead and uh, make sure you mist it afterwards and you wanna mop up any extra water. You don't want too much on there. And after they're completely dry, which is, this is when they're dry and I waited about an hour, you mist it wait a little bit and you peel them back and look at that they turned out fantastic so the big thing is you just want to make sure that you put enough water on there and I actually put too much water on it I had to mop some of it up but you want to give the paper time to absorb that water and when you peel them off, this is the second time. Now see, I'm seeing I'm having a hard time there with it. So I'm gonna re-mist it. And I'm just kind of pressing the, it down with my fingers and I'm gonna start from the other side. Cause you don't wanna peel the paint up. Uh, you don't want the paint on the paper peeling up. You want it to lay down on your project. So that's basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to release that paint with the water. So now all I'm doing is I'm going around the edges uh, with my uh, pink, uh, petticoat pink from DIY. And I'm gonna go all the way around the edges. And it's really not that hard to do that because there's like a little lip. And if you mess up, you can always um, go and uh, wipe it off because we've already sealed this. I've sealed it with a spray sealer, just like I did with the boxes. I sprayed all of them when they were dry uh, with a spray sealer before I went on to any other steps because you want to seal that paint that's in there. And then I go in and that's when I can use my uh, liquid brush sealer or any tints or anything like that. So after I do that, I decide I want to go ahead and go in with the apothecary from DIY and make a second um, uh, accent around this tray. And it's really not that hard to do. You can just take a, a smaller artist brush. And if you mess up, you can always go in with your other paint and um, you know fix it. So it didn't really actually didn't take very time, much time at all. and just go back in and um, fix any spots that you might have messed up on. And so now what I'm doing is I'm taking my uh, apothecary labels uh, from IOD 
And this time I'm using um, embossing, uh, an embossing dauber from Ranger. It works the same as the Versamark. It's just a clear ink that your embossing powder can um, stick to. And I'm using one of the labels from the apothecary labels to stamp inside of this middle uh, stamp or, or, or middle inlay. And it fits perfectly and I'm sure that's probably by design. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take off any extra embossing powder. And I'm just doing that with a clean, dry brush. And then I'm using my heat gun or, or embossing gun. Again, you can't use a hair dryer. And then after that's done, I'm taking some um, rub and buff, the antique gold and going around it. And then I mix some uh, Pan Couture Van Dyke Brown with some Dixie Bell uh, Clear Sealer, Matte Clear Sealer. And I'm using it to kind of uh, seal this tray and seal the extra paint and wiping most of it off and that is our project i think that turned out really great it's a wonderful little tray to put jewelry on or do whatever So now we're on to project number four. And this is really fun. I have a clipboard that I've had for a while. I have probably about five or six of them that I picked up somewhere. I don't even remember where. It might have even been at the dollar store years ago. But um, you can still get them. You can get them online. I've seen them at Walmart. But we are gonna make uh, I, I don't know what, I, what you can really, you could use this to hold uh, papers, you can use it to hold photographs. It's a very practical uh, thing, but we're going to make it look pretty and shabby. So I'm going over the whole thing with the DIY Crinlin. I love this color, it's like an off-white um, color. And again, we're going to be using um, some of the already used once inlay. And I'm cutting it apart. I'm not using it the same way that I did before. I basically took that one piece that I used on one box and I cut off all of the edges to make four little uh, side edge pieces. I'm putting the middle piece on and then I'm going to put the end pieces on. And basically, I just go through the same process as we did before. And I'm not gonna, I didn't show you taking them off and everything because we've already done that a bunch of times. <laughs> Y'all figured it out by now. And I'm doing the same thing that I did before. I used um, some embossing ink on the stamp. And this stamp is from the new collection, spring collection, and it's called Veranda. It has a lot of beautiful stamps in it. I love this frame though that it has, and that's what I'm using. I'm using the frame, and then there's like a corner piece that I'm gonna use around the edges. So I'm gonna just go through the same process of using the embossing powder. And it didn't do really good on top. I go back in and I fix that and restamp the top part. Again, using my um, embossing gun to heat it all up. Basing it, embossing powder is really just plastic, pig, pigmented plastic. And that's why you need a heat gun to heat it up because to melt it all. So 
So now what I'm doing is I'm using another piece of that uh, Veranda uh, stamp set from IOD, their new spring release. It's a little corner piece that you they have in there. And I'm basically um, going around the edges of the four uh, pieces of inlay that we have on there. And I'm gonna do em emboss those also. So now what I'm doing is I am using my gilding wax, my bronze gilding wax from Dixie Belle. And I am um, using it to paint a casting from the mold Classic Elements from IOD. Um, I cast it in resin. If you're curious how to do that, um, you can look on some of my previous videos. I've done it multiple times. And what I'm doing now is I'm taking my heat gun to make sure that the mold is flat and glued it onto the top of that clipboard. And after I've done that, and I glued it on with um, uh, the same uh, E6000 and uh, super glue, Gorilla Super Glue. And now what I'm doing is I'm using the mixture that I had made before from uh, the mixing the Van Dyke Brown Paint Couture with the Dixie Bell uh, clear matte sealer. And I'm using that to, uh, to basically put a second coat of um, a sealer on here. And I'm also sealing all the embossing that we did. And it's going to tint the piece a little bit so it doesn't look so brand new. And any little imperfections in paint or whatever, it's going to show and really make it look nice and vintage, but not overly so, I don't think. And that is our finished product. And I think it turned out great. And it's also very useful. You can use it as a picture. I'm paying pictures on or memos or whatever you'd like. So now we're on to project number five. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, this is just a base that I purchased a long time ago from the Dollar Tree I've had around. It is a red glass base that I sprayed with a white um, spray. I think it was, I don't remember which one it was exactly. I think it was Krylon. Uh, it's a, a spray sealer. Not positive because I did it a long time ago. But anyway, I thought I would use it for this. And I'm painting it with the Dixie Bell uh, Petticoat Pink. And I watered it down quite a bit. Um, I added some water to it because I'm running. I was running low at the end of these projects. And I probably did it too much. You can see right there, it's kind of watery. So I did two coats with it, kind of watery, and then I decided to do another top coat. Um, and that top coat, I basically mixed some salt wash with it. And that gave it a little texture, made it a little thicker. And then I put my inlays on there. And again, these are the used ones. These all came originally from, um, the first use was on the hat box. And I'm going through the same processes that I did on all the other stuff that we did. Spraying it, you know, to release it. One thing you'll notice whenever you use uh, the inlay on a uh, paint, another colored 
pink rather than like just the white or off-white that we used. It's going to be even fainter because, you know, obviously it's not on a white uh, background, which that's fine. I like it. I think this really, really looks like just a very vintage old uh, piece of pottery. It has um, texture from the um, inlay and also the salt wash. And I really love how it looks. So I sprayed it with a spray sealer and after that dried, I went over it with that same Van Dyke Brown and uh, Dixie Belle matte sealer to give it a little vintage look, um, just not as dark. And then I just took some uh, lace and tied a bow on it. I think it turned out beautiful. So now we are on our last project, project number six. And this really, this is a little tin, I guess it's a lunchbox uh, that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I am going to make over this little tin. I like to challenge myself every now and then. Now remember I'm on my last bit of uh, the petticoat pink running out of the pink so I'm gonna go over this a couple times with the petticoat pink and I'm also going to uh, do one coat with it I think two coats I did with that watery mixture and then I used made some salt wash on the third just to make sure I covered all this and I had sprayed it with a clear matte sealer beforehand I cut off the little plastic handle that was on there. And then again, I'm using um, inlays that I used on the hat boxes the second time. So we go through the same process we did before. Taking them, putting them on, taking them off. Not any different. Uh, I could have put more pieces on there, but in the end, you really don't even notice them that much, but I think it really adds to the character of this whole piece. And then what I do is I take that Van Dyke Brown um, uh, paint couture uh, glaze with the mixture of the Dixie Belle. And this is going on a little bit darker than I did the vase. I made it a little bit darker because I wanted this to look a little bit more vintage. And the layers of paint on that, I, I dried it with my uh, heat gun, so they, they had there was some cracking and things like that, and I think it, it really, really added to the character of this. So after I did that and it dried, um, I went ahead and painted uh, around it with my uh, gilding uh, wax, my rub and buff with the antique gold. And I basically went all the way around the rim on the top and then the bottom. And then there were some little parts that chipped on the little on the very bottom and I just went around it with my finger with the gold rubbing buff just to add some gold to it. I'm really going for a French country shabby look with all these pieces. Oh, and I did spray this again. I did all the pieces. I sprayed them with a clear sealer before I did any of the other processes. 
And now I'm just taking um, a piece of uh, foam that I have and I'm putting it in the bottom of this little, I don't know, I'm gonna call it a lunch tin. And I have some doilies and some lace and I'm just laying them on top of it. And I'm using that little Eiffel Tower to prop up the top of this tin and it'll look pretty, but it's also serving a purpose. I just put a couple dots of glue on the bottom of the Eiffel Tower, and then I put a little bit on top, and then the top of the tin, and that actually holds it up. And then I put a few dots of glue on this other piece of lace to put behind it. I thought it needed something. And in the front there, I put two little buttons uh, that have that they have little rhinestones on them to cover up where I cut off the plastic handle of our little lunch pail. And now I'm just taking um, different pieces of costume jewelry to kind of put in there and kind of um, arrange it the way that I want to. And some things I put little dots of glue to hold it down. Others I just lay in there. And this whole thing is just meant to be something, um, a, decor a decorative piece that you put up on a shelf or something. Um, you could make it functional and, you know, have it open and close and put things in it. But I kind of wanted it just to be a decorative piece. And I think it turned out beautiful and it looked great on a shelf. Uh, looked pretty on a dresser. I, I think, it's probably one of my, my favorite pieces in this whole vignette, just because of what it started with. And I'm just taking little pieces of uh, costume jewelry and buttons and things that I have on hand, and I'm um, just using that. And the reason I did this is I had done um, something with the tin not too long ago in a previous video, and someone said to me they don't have anything like that. Well, you can see that this little tin that I got from the Dollar Tree, what I'm making it into, you don't have to have the same things that I have. Use what you have. Um, I'm here to inspire you. And, you know, I don't make projects cookie cutter that you can get everything, you know, from the Dollar Tree. I use what I have. I use things that I uh, purchase, you know, um, secondhand. So obviously you're not always going to have the same things, but I'm just trying to uh, motivate people to make things that are special. Uh, I'm not trying to do quick uh, flips that, you know, you don't have to put anything into or, you know, I, this is some of my projects are involved. That's because you're making something special that nobody else is going to have. And I think this turned out fantastic. Uh, it really is one of my favorite pieces, considering what it started with. Well, that's it thank you for hanging out with me today I hope that you got something out of this and we had a lot of projects to go through and it was a lot of fun I want to say I still have half of that pack left over of inlay so we got a lot done
So I hope to see you again next time. Please help out my brand new channel and give me a like, subscribe, share, so that YouTube knows that you like my videos, that I know that you like them. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Take care.